So, uh, bonjour et bienvenue à Caution and Relay. The first cred is the deepest. So, who am I? My name is Gabriel Prudhomme. I am a pen tester at Black Hills, fortunate enough to work for this company. Uh, and I've, I've got a, a few certs. Uh, the agenda for today, uh, we're going to see why make this talk. We're going to talk a little bit about the theory of NTLM Relay and method of caution. And we're going to see which protocol can be relayed where. Uh, then we're going to touch on why does this work and how it works. This um, talk is based on many demo. And at the end, if times permit, uh, we're going to have uh, questions. So why this talk? First and foremost, it, it, it is fun. It's a topic close to my heart. I used to work in a company where we ship Intel NOC uh, and just drop on, on the network without any credit. So this was my bread and butter. As far as I know, it's not taught in certification. It's uh, relatively easy to pull off and it's highly effective. It's applicable in real life. I mean, it, it basically works if the blue team haven't done any mitigation for it. And at the same time, we want to bring awareness to the blue teams. This talk is more geared towards beginner to intermediate, but if you're experienced, I, I hope that you learn a thing or two. And if you notice any error, I'm sure I'm going to misspoke some, uh, some subject and make error here and there. So. Uh, if you notice something is not accurate, or if you know a better way to do it, please reach out. We'll all be better off at the end of the day. So uh, here is a demo of uh, all the, uh, sorry, a list of all the demo that we're gonna do today. There is 19 in total. Like Jason said, there's gonna be a 10 minute pause in between the, the two parts. And uh, this it, those links are clickable. So if you refer to it after, uh, it will be easier to find the, the technique that you're looking for. And for each technique, there's all the instruction, like basically the recipe and also uh, the cleanup procedure. So why does this work actually? This is a Microsoft on-prem Active Directory for the most part. Um, and it just comes because Microsoft needs to make Active Directory work. So it's very open. They need to support legacy. Uh, so the, the topic that we're going to touch, there is LLMNR and BTNS, MDNS. Those are name resolution complementary to DNS, and we can abuse and poison that. WPAD is the automatic proxy detection. I'm going to abuse that as well. LDAP-S is um, not enabled or required. Uh, and IPv uh, Windows have a preference for IPv6. Uh, SMB signing is not uh, enabled except for the DC. ADCS, HTTP endpoint doesn't come with HTTPS by default. And the print spooler service is enabled by default. The WebDAV client is um, present on workstation, although it is not stop. And there's a LDAP attribute for the domain uh, called MSDS machine account quota. By default, this is uh, set to 10. That means any low priv user can create fake machine account, and those fake machine account are as good as any low priv credential. And any uh, low privilege user can query the Active Directory. They can query the username, the machine. They can do attacks such as Bloodhound, Kerberos, and uh, ADCS. So now we're going to talk about coercion. Uh, and the first option is what we call uh, poison the network. The classic, the one that uh, pretty much everyone knows is the LMNR and, and BTNS, etc. You can poison that with tools such as Responder uh, for Linux and NV for Windows. There's a new kit uh, around the block. It's called Pretender, written in Go cross-platform. I haven't the chance to try it. You can also poison DHCP offer and inject malicious WPAD or DNS. Laurent Gaffier, who is the author of Responder, created a good blog about it right here. We, we can also do a uh, rogue DHCP IPv6 with men in the middle six and inv. This tool is from Diljan. And there's also another old school method called uh, ARP poisoning. This method, you have to be careful because it's a little bit more risky. You could crash the, the network, essentially. So if we do that, we need to... It's better to target only one uh, host at, at a time. The second op option to course is what we call uh, coercion on demand because we can uh, generate an immediate 
hash uh, requests from the host that we're trying to uh, to compromise. Usually, those methods they use RPC call. And uh, the first time this came to my attention, it was uh, exploiting the what we call the printer bug exploit by Lee Christensen. And it basically uh, asked a remote host, hey, do you have something in your print spooler? Do you have a print to file or something like that? And we received a machine, a machine ash in return. A year and a half ago, I, I, I believe there was another big one by uh, Lionel Gilles called Petspotam. And this changed everything because when at the time that it came out, you could coerce a domain controller without any authentication. So when you mix that with other technique, it become uh, very devastating. So like I said, it was patch. After that, Microsoft break the patch and now they patch it again. But just know that it's still doable with a low privilege account. Most recently, there was another one called DFS cores. Uh, and that one was for uh, DC only, I believe. And the thing is, even if Microsoft tried to patch it, or if you uh, implement RPC on, on your firewall, the author, they always come with new RPC calls. So this is kind of a cat and uh, mouse game, like most things are in InfoSec. Previously, there was also something similar uh, in the priv exchange by, by Dirk Jan for the exchange server. Recently, the, the guy at SpectreOps, they come up with a way to course SCCM, and we're going to see that uh, later in the demo. And uh, finally, there's a tool called Courser by Padalerius, which combine all of them together. So it's an all-in-one tool. Those slides, they were provided by a guy named uh, Shutdown. He uh, graciously uh, accepted for me to use his slide. And so if you're not aware of this website, the Acura recipe, I highly recommend it. It's uh, everything related to exploiting Active Directory, let's say ADCS, whatever you want. There's all the command there and good explanation. I highly recommend that. And um, so, so what we can see in this diagram is here we will have the, the protocol and the client side mitigation, and then where to relate the protocol, depending on the server and the mitigation mitigation on the server side. And so for example, here we can see, or oh, we cannot really if uh, SMB or LDAP is required. If this is one thing that interests you, I also highly encourage you to go to Akendo. It, it's another website by Pixis and it really goes in depth about all the details. And it's very, very uh, detailed and it's kind of a university paper style explanation. Uh, this slide is also from Shutdown. And this is basically our roadmap of what we're going to discuss in this podcast. We have the method of coercion here. And then we have the incoming uh, SMB uh, or HTTP here. The, the mitigation on the client side, the server side. Here it's where we are going. And this these are the post relay attacks. So we're going to cover almost all of them. and. If you have one thing to remember about this slide is uh, the SMB incoming ash are less powerful than the HTTP because the HTTP can go pretty much everywhere, but the SMB, it, it can only do that. It cannot go on LDAP unless it's vulnerable to an older exploit called uh, drop the mic. And if you are from the blue team, I want to attract your attention to all those cuts here. This is basically what you have to implement to make sure that what we're going to see is not possible in your environment. This is the last slide before the fun commence. I made a list of the recon tool that we use to know what mitigation are in place in the environment and the language uh, associated. So now further ado, we're going to talk about the, the demo. There's 19 demo. So we're going to start slowly with the basic and we're going to slowly ramp up to more complex stuff and we're going to introduce new concept along the way. So. Here, we're going to course the domain with uh, LLMNR, and we're going to get a SMB NTLM v2 hash. So what can we do with that? There, there's two options. The first option is to crack it to clear text password. And here, it's the list of uh, the mode that Ashcat can operate to crack the password. Most likely, what you're, you're going to see is not NTLM v1 and not NTLM v2. And for the second demo, we're, we're going to talk about uh, really it instead of cracking it. So here on the left, we're going to run the tool Responder. 
with the basic uh, no no flag, no nothing. The first portion or the poison poisoner section, and then you have the listener section after that. In the bottom, we have other information such as our IP address. On the left, I'm going to emulate uh, someone trying to reach a server that does, doesn't exist. And we receive the hash from the Mercedes low as a low priv user. If you look in the folder logs, we have captured the hash into a file and it looks like that. So we're going to take that hash and we're going to crack it with uh, Ashcat. You could use other tool uh, such as John, uh, but Ashcat is the tool I prefer. And then we can leverage the power of GPU and in those really fast uh, billion of attempts per second. And it can, like, this is a deep topic where you can also have rules and special word lists and things like that. But let's keep it simple for this demo. Uh, we crack it and uh, we have the password in clear text. So that's ideally what you want to do. Uh, if it doesn't crack, then we can relay it. And we uh, introduce uh, NTLM relics, which is a very good tool to relay those hash. When you relay it to a target, if the context that you're relaying it is elevated, then we can uh, obtain remote code execution on that, on that uh, target. So we're going to do the same thing here. Simulate uh, someone trying to reach a resource that doesn't exist. And we can see that this time, the user, it, it gives us the clue because the, the user is workstation-admin. So the first thing, we're going to run crapmap exec and identify host where SMB signing is disabled with the dash gen relay flag. Uh, the main controller are always uh, signing enable. So we have two hosts where is signing uh, false, IP 200 and 205. Now we're going to change the configuration of responder and we're going to disable it from listening on SMB. And the reason why we do that and HTTP, the reason why we do that is because we want NTLM Relay X to be uh, able to capture those incoming ash and not Responder. We're, we're going to use Responder only for the poisoning section. And we put the SMB to support ash is very important on modern OS. Here you have the option for NTLM relics, uh, dash target for an IP, uh, TF for a target file, interactive to drop in an interactive shell for SMB and LDAP. There's a lot of options where we're going to cover a lot of them, but there's there's so much stuff in there. Uh, SOX is one thing we're going to see as well. And then you can do cross protocol like uh, RPC, MSSQL, HTTP, LDAP. And there's other attack like ADCS and shadow credential. We're going to see that as well. So uh, target file, the file that we generated. We start responder. And we're going to simulate, again, someone who's looking for a resource that has been decommissioned, for example. So we saw that we received the incoming ash at workstation admin. The first one failed. The reason is that you cannot relate to yourself. The, the 200 is, is the same machine. This has been patched a long time ago. But the second one was successful. And by default, if you target to somewhere on SMB that you have uh, elevated privilege, it will dump the SAM. And these are the ash for the local admin accounts. So we have the administrator uh, NTLM ash. And now we're trying to get an uh, interactive shell on that host using, I think, WMI exec. So this, again, it's not a domain account. It's a local account. That's why here we have the desktop instead of the name of the, the domain. And we have an interactive shell. We, we compromise the host. For the third demo, we're going to talk about DHCP IPv6 poisoning. We're going to have a rogue DHCP IPv6 server, and we're going to inject a malicious WPAD uh, and this way we will receive an uh, incoming ash. So minimal middle six, the name of the domain.
And then in TLM Relics dash six, we forward it to LDAP. And we have a row WPAN server. It could be anything because we're going to poison it anyway. It usually takes a time for the network card to uh, refresh, but here I'm just going to force it. And sometimes it's in stand, sometimes it, it takes time. Uh, it it, it depends. For example, we, we saw here we poisoned the server 2019, but the, the desktop came after. So we said that we inject and we have a request for, for the pack file on the uh, attacker WPAD. And what happened is we forwarded it to LDAP and we dump information about the, the domain. There's more interesting stuff that we can do, but for now, we just dump the information about the domain and it will give us uh, information such as username, machine account, policy group, etc. So we have a better idea of which incoming hash might be uh, elevated on certain server. So it, it dumps it in many format. Let's just open it and this is the kind of in information that, that we have. For the fourth demo, we're going to do something similar, except we're going to simply uh, inject WPAD in the normal DHCP, not the IPv6. And instead of just dumping the domain, uh, we're going to create a fake machine account. So we are uh, forwarding it to LDAP to the DC, and we add the flag add computer and uh, roam uh, WPAD again. Responder with the DHCP option. We set the, the network card. We have the DHCP request, requesting the pack file. And we see here we created the new fake machine account, and it gives us the password. So basically we control this object. Now we're gonna, <clears throat> we're gonna authenticate with this object and we're gonna query the, the DC. So what we're gonna do, uh, we're going to authenticate to the domain with this fake machine account, and we're going to do the Kerberos uh, request. And fake machine account, or actually all machine account, they have a domain sign at the end. That, that's how we can recognize them. So we can see that we are authenticated as any low proof user. And here you have the cleanup instruction if you want to remove this fake machine account, but you need a domain administrator and dash delete. For the fifth demo, let's say we are in a situation where there are no HTTP uh, requests and we cannot crack the NetNTLM v2 hash. We are not a local admin anywhere. So we will identify hosts where SMB signing is disabled. We're gonna use the dash socks and it's going to keep the connection open always so that we can run tool to the socks as much as we want and not lose the connection because sometimes the, the connection might only happen one time during the night uh, when it, it runs a certain script or something. And then we're going to use this opportunity to run the, the script lookup SID and we're going to dump the domain user and the local user. So at least we will have something. Here we change the responder config, make sure SMB and HTTP is disabled like we did before. So we run responder. Here we identify the host where SMB signing is disabled. I'm gonna forward that because we already seen how to do that.
So here we do uh, NTLM Relay X with the option dash socks. Simulate the request. And we have uh, established a SOX proxy. And just, just to be clear, this SOX proxy, it is not a SOX proxy you would do on a C2 or something like that. It, it's a SOX proxy only for NTLM Relay X, and it's only for this specific host with this specific context, uh, with this specific protocol. So if we issue the command SOX, we see that we have one on IP200 as the low on protocol SMB. We edit our proxy uh, proxy chain configuration. By default, it used port 1080, either on SOX4 or SOX5. And we proxy chain, do our <clears throat> lookup SID with the flag uh, domain SID. And we dump the domain machine account groups and username. So at least we have something like we, we can do password spray or something like that after. You can also dump the, the local admin just by removing dash, the, the local user. Okay, for the next uh, technique, this is a pretty bad one. Um, and the, the, the consequences is very bad. Uh, there's a domain setting called land manager authentication. I think there, there are six level and it needs, if it's lower than level three, I believe, uh, what will happen is that you will receive a net and TLM V1 hash. This is pretty bad because if you course a domain controller, with the printer bond or Pitspotam, and he give you a net NTLM V1 hash, it can be cracked or downgrade to a regular NTLM. And a regular NTLM can be used and pass the hash attack. And so we can do DC sync attack. Uh, what a DC sync attack is, is basically pull off all the hash of, of the domain. <clears throat> basically, it's a domain controller replication. And uh, after that, we hold all the key of the domain. So the first thing we need to do is uh, change again in responder uh, co configuration, the challenge. We're going to put 112233 all the way up to 88. The reason is that it's uh, easier to crack. And then we run responder. We notice our IP there, pets bottom. Uh, this is our IP and this is the IP of the domain controller. And it did not work. The reason it did not work, it's because it's patch. Uh, so we need to provide low privilege user or any, any authentication. It could be our fake machine account that we created earlier. And we see that we receive uh, net, uh, net NTLM v v1. Now, when you do that, you usually, uh, you might want to run the dash dash LM or the disable ESS flag. I thought SSP was not able to be cracked, but it, it cracked that time. Uh, I'm not 100% sure why. So we see that we have our hash here. And then there is this website called uh, crack.sh that will crack that for you in a minute or two. It uses uh, FPGA and rainbow table. I, I believe before you had to pay for the SSP, but this time it let it crack it for, for me for, for free. So I'm, I'm not too sure about what's going on with that. You can also crack it on your own with your own uh, GPU ring. I think it will take around uh, 30 days if I'm not mistaken. So we put the ash in this format. And I'm going to put an email.
I'm going to forward it a little bit. We receive the results here, and it basically gives us the NTLM. Now we're going to use this NTLM and proceed with the domain controller replication, the DC sync attack. We can target the same host because it's the, it's the password. And we put the uh, dash flag. Make sure to put a semicolon in front. And we, we DC sync the entire domain. We hold all the keys of the domain. So I'm going to take the hash for the domain administrator. And now we're going <clears> to. <throat> uh, get an interactive shell as the domain administrator on the domain controller. And for that, we're going to use the WMI exec. By the way, I never tried to be stealth in this demo. It's just to demonstrate the, the impact. So bada bing, bada boom, we are on DC1. The next attack came to me only recently by the guy at Praetorians. And the way I understand it is if you have old installation of Exchange, it's overprivileged. And I'm not sure if it comes by default or if it's in the default documentation. But what happened is there is this Exchange uh, Trust subsystem group, which the Exchange are a member of. But this group is also admin to every Exchange machine account. So what happened is if you put Spotam, one of the Exchange, then you can relate to the other Exchange and dump the, the sum or whatever you want. To identify that, we have a blood on dump that uh, allow us to see the, the permission relationship visually. And we see we have exchange one, have admin to exchange two. Another way is to run this cipher query. And then we really see the, the relationship between the two objects. What, what we're going to do, we're going to check if SMB signing is disabled on the Exchange servers. So now we're going to use but Spotam uh, using low privilege uh, credential on the first exchange. And we receive the machine ash. We see the dollar sign for exchange 01. Now we're, we're going to relay it to exchange 02. And by default, in TLM, relay use SMB protocol. And we have a succeed authentication and we dump the SAM hash. We're going to use PS exec and we're going to use the local administrator to get an interactive shell on the host. And we are system. So the the next uh, demo is a little bit different, and it uh, helped me in case uh, in the past where I couldn't find anything else. So this technique is called uh, LDAP passback attack on printers. Came to my attention by the gentleman at Trusted Sec called Perk X. Uh, basically, what we do we identify a printer that used a default password. We authenticate to it or maybe there's a bypass that we can do. 
Once we are logged in in the printer, we locate the LDAP option, and then we change the domain controller IP for our IP. And sometimes it's possible to even lower, uh, downgrade the authentication type. And we find a way to pr provoke the authentication, or if it's not possible, we, we wait. And uh, then we receive and capture the authentication with Responder, or uh, we can even relay it with NTLM Relix at, at this point. Uh, everything is a good option. I've seen a um, situation in the past also where the printer will not uh, spit his ash unless it's bind to a real domain controller. In this case, we can use SOCAT and do a, a forward, a port forward to the real domain controller and intercept the ash with a TCP dump or, or Wireshark. Um, so here, what it looks like. Uh, I particularly like the, the Rico model because they, they really have everything that we need. So here was the IP of the real domain controller. I changed it for my IP. The port number, uh, sometimes it's 389, but depending on the network segmentation, you might want to change it. The authentication here, there was a job box from NetNTLM v2 to uh, clear text authentication. Yes, please, thank you. And there's a convenient test button here. And here in, in our box, we run netcat. And in this case, we receive the ash in clear text. Just uh, one thing to keep in mind is sometimes there's a little bit of garbage uh, in front and in the back. So you just need to be aware of that. This is also an interesting uh, attack. Sometimes uh, low privilege users uh, have access to MSSQL server if they are misconfigured. So they can log in into the MSSQL server. They might not be elevated, but it's enough to run query. And there's interesting uh, SQL query that we can run. For example, the XP directory where we can coerce the server to authenticate back to us. And then we can do all the thing that we talked so far, uh, like relaying the incoming ash to other S uh, SQL server or any host and do cross protocol as well. And we're going to do uh, that one from Windows. So there is this interesting project called PowerUp SQL. I think it's from NetSpy. So we import the project, get SQL instance. We see we have two server, SQL uh, 2019 and SQL 02. Then we use the instance domain. This was wrongly pasted, but we copy the SQL instance and we pipe it into get SQL server info, and it gives us more information. So for example, we can see in which context the service is running as. We can see that this is using a local service. We can see that we are currently logged in as our, our user low, and we are not sysadmin on that box. So not so interesting. The 02, we can see that the service account is running as a domain uh, service SQL account. So that's more interesting for us. We are logged in as our low, and we are not sysadmin on that box as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to use a tool called ID similar to MS SQL Studio. We're going to connect to that box. Using Windows credential. And then once we are on that box, we are going to run this XP directory command backslash backslash. The UNC is our IP. We run our trusty responder. And we receive the hash of the service SQL domain account. So now what we're going to do, we could crack it, but we can also relay it. Uh, during. Uh, the time that I was making this demo, I noticed using the fully qualified domain name did not work well. I'm not sure why. So I, here I'm just taking the IP and we're putting it in NTLM Relay X. We're targeting protocol SQL on the first SQL domain. And we're going to run this dash Q. It's a query where we say, are we a member of the sysadmin? 
because we want to know if we are in elevated in the SQL uh, server. And we can see that the really the authentication was successful. And for our SQL query, we have a return of one, meaning we are sysadmin uh, in the SQL context on the other server. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to come back again with our dash socks because we want to keep the connection open so we can use other tool. Only one dash. Provoke the authentication again. And this time it did not work. The, the reason it did not work and I leave it in the demo, it's because I find it's important to, uh, to point out that if you forget this flag, uh, it might not uh, work. And the flag that we're missing is uh, SMB2 support. And now we have the SOX uh, successfully uh, establish. So now we're going to use another in packet module called MS uh, SQL client. First, we make sure our uh, SOX proxy is well configured on 1080 and it is. So MS SQL client, Windows up, no pass. Look at, we look at the command, we can see that we can enable XP command shell. We are elevated in the SQL server. And after that, we can run command. So XP command shell. And we can run command. So we essentially pass from a low prev user and we compromise the SQL server. The next demo for the for the tenth one is um, SCCM uh, client push installation. This came to my attention by the guy at SpectreOps, uh, Thomas uh, Chris Thompson, and uh, it's it, it's very powerful where any low prev user can uh, request uh, authentication from the SCCM service. And the condition is the configuration. It has to be enabled automatic uh, site-wide push installation and allow connection to fall back to uh, NTLM. So the, the tool that they release, it's called Sharp SC SCCM. This is a short demo. The first command is we need to identify the tree letter of the SCCM server. In this case, is ROO. And then we run it with invoke client push dash t our IP. It takes about 10 seconds and we will receive the hash. What's interesting is we receive two hash. The first hash is the service account. And this hash have to be elevated because it, for SCCM to do its job, it, it needs to be elevated. But the second hash is the um, SCCM machine account. So that's a nice bonus. The, the next slide is the last slide for the first portion of this webcast. This talks about files that you can put at SMB share. Sometimes low preview user, they, they, they have right access to SMB share. And anyone else who visit this SMB share will be coerced to authenticate to us. So here's a few extension that I tested. And uh, the guys at MDSEC, they, they wrote this really good blog about it. And they also release a tool called uh, Farmer. It helps you to generate those files. It uh, helps you to inject malicious um, UNC path request in Office documents. And there's also a listener similar to Responder or Inve where you can capture the, the incoming hash. One thing that was also uh, new to me when I read this blog is that Ninja Paranoid released that on Twitter where if you have a host-based firewall and you're not able to listen because you, you don't have the permission, they, there is this URI on port 80 
that you could uh, use. So that was new to me. So now for, for the demo, we're going to use a tool called SMB map to identify the, the potential uh, SMB uh, server. So the file that we're going to upload, it looks like that. And the, the icon uh, reference point to us on, on our IP. So now we're going to sweep our subnet to see which SMB uh, share that we have access to. This tool might not be the best, by the way, because if you have write access, it will write a file. But if you don't have the delete option, it doesn't let you delete. So just keep that in mind. And we can see that we have uh, write access on this sure employee file. Now, just to check if it's a good place to upload our malicious file, we're going to browse and see what's in there. It looks like your typical business uh, folders. So we're going to inject our malicious file right there. First, we start our friend responder. We upload our file. And we immediately re receive a hash. The reason is because someone was already in there. But uh, this is completely transparent to the user. They have no idea this just happened. And on this host, we're going to simulate what happened when someone uh, browsed the file. We immediately received the hash. And we are already at the, the break. It's a 10-minute break. Uh, go grab a drink, uh, grab a snack, uh, do whatever you have to do. And uh, we'll come back uh, in 10 minutes. All right, <clears throat> so let's continue. Uh, now that we put the kid in bed, let's uh, do the fun stuff. And this is one of my favorite. It's called uh, WebDAV. What is WebDAV? WebDAV is kind of a halfway uh, file server and an HTTP server. So why is it so fun? Uh, it's because it will give us uh, HTTP hash. So this is what the, the UNC path looks like, backslash, backslash, the NetBIOS name of the machine, at and this could be any port and then the directory file. So uh, one thing about WebDAV is that the WebDAV client, it's uh, the service that is responsible for that is web client. And it, it's present by default on workstation, although it is not start. But there are ways to, to start it. Even though if we cannot just pop the service and start it ourselves, there's a way to coerce it. And uh, unfortunately, this service is not present by default on uh, server OS. It doesn't mean it could not be installed, but uh, by default, it's not there. So like I said, it produced HTTP hash, then we can relay it to LDAP and have a lot of fun. It can be any port. There are a few uh, prerequisites. First, like I said, it needs to be the NetBIOS name, and it must be in the local intranet, or at least it should be. So how can we do, do that? We either need to create a DNS record. Maybe we already have a, a DNS record for the machine we want to receive, or we can poison. But this is only good for our subnet where we have visibility. And one thing that my buddy SnowScan come uh, bring to my attention lately is that it's possible to create a, a DNS A record that will point out to an external IP. Often we will have network segmentation where we cannot receive the incoming hash. But with this technique and this tool called a uh, DNS tool made by Dirjan once again, thank you, Dirjan, for that, uh, we can see that we add and we put external IP on the public internet. And then uh, we wait a little bit that it re replicate and we can ping it and it will uh, assume that it's in the internet. 
And then if we force the web dev query, we can see that we received the hash over port 80 on the, the public internet. So that's, that's pretty cool. And as, as far as the cleanup, basically the same uh, tool and uh, dash A for action, LDAP delete. And we can see that it deletes off the, the uh, LDAP server. So now this one is a little bit hard to explain. I wish I made a diagram for it, but I'm just going to explain it as we go. Uh, basically, what we're going to do, we're going to use course a domain controller with Petspatam, receive the ash, and I should say an unpatch domain controller, receive the ash, put it in a, a SOX, and we're going to use the SOX towards target that don't have SMB signing enabled. Then we're going to run the WebDAV client scan scanner, see if WebDAV uh, is client is present and started on those hosts. And then we're going to course those host WebDAV client to authenticate back to us. And we're going to get the machine account ash. Now with the machine account ash, we're going to authenticate, we're going to relay it to LDAP and we're going to um, change his own machine account ash uh, attribute called MSDS allow to act on behalf of other identity. And I should have said just before that, we're going to create a fake machine account. We're going to put that fake machine account in this LDAP attribute. And then at the end, to close the deal, we're going to request a certificate in the name of the domain administrator on this specific uh, ma machine. So it's a, a mouthful. It's a spaghetti. So the first thing that we do, we run responder, but it's bottom the DC. We see that it's it's not patch and we receive the hash, but just for clarification, we could totally use a low priv user for that part. So even if the DC was patched, it, it, it will work. So what we're going to do here, I'm, I'm running uh, run finger. It's a tool that came in responder tool set. Similar to what we did earlier with uh, crap map exec to identify the host with uh, signing uh, false. It is faster, and just one note on that tool, you can also uh, query remote host to know when was their last, where, when was they were booted last time. So it might give you a clue on if they are patched or not. And I think it might not work on all OS, but it, it, it works on several OS. So we use this to scan hosts where SMB signing is disabled. We have our list. Next, we're going to use NTLM Relay X target file, SMB2, SMB2 socks. We're going to output the file. And we say no HTTP server. That's important because we don't want to hold the port. We want to use it for a, the next step attack. We're going to coerce the DC with Petspatan. Now we see that we have our SOX proxy established on the two targeted hosts in the name of the domain controller. Once again, this step is optional, but I just uh, find it's cool that we could loop all those attacks together. Here, what we're going to do, we're going to do a bash loop into all those, uh, those two hosts. We're going to proxy chain through that proxy, and we're going to use the WebDAV scanner in the name of the domain controller at those two hosts to see if WebDAV uh, client is present. So basically, this is a WebDAV sc scanner. It's made by our friend Pixies. And we can see that it's running on those two hosts. So now that we know that, we're going to run another instance of uh, NetNTLM Relay X. But this time, we're going to forward it to LDAP S. And we're going to do the dash delegate access. What it will do, it will create the fake machine account. And it will, we are coming as the machine account of the 2 ash uh, target. And like I said earlier, it will um, put this fake machine account in the MSDS 
allowed to act on behalf of other identity. This essentially is creating a resource-based constraint delegation. And it's not working because uh, raw server was enabled and it's not present in this older version of Impacket. By the way, I always prefer to use older version of Impacket to do that. So I, I also run Responder. The reason is that I'm gonna coerce the web dev service and I don't necessarily have a DNS uh, entry, so it will just search for anything. I will poison it and it will come back to uh, NTLM Relax. Re Responder is complaining about you cannot listen on AT and 445. That's normal. We are using those port with, uh, with uh, our two NTLM Relax se session. Here in this bottom, um, console here i'm using uh the printer bug it is similar to uh Pets Patam. in the context of the domain controller had all the the target and we are doing a bash loop again and like i said we are targeting any, anything it will be poisoned it will come back here on port 80 and we can see that we receive the authentication here as the two machine account server 2019 and workstation so first it create the fake machine account give us the password so we control this object and then it puts it in the msds allow on behalf of other identity and, and it does that for the two uh, target And then it says this uh, fake machine ash can impersonate user on the, the target. So the user that we're going to impersonate, uh, since we can choose, we're going to choose a, 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 a domain admin, but we need to make sure it's uh, active. So in this case, for uh, sake of simplicity, I'm just going to use the default domain administrator. And then we use this impacket uh, module again, get service ticket, where we're gonna connect to the SPN SIF for the target SRV 2019 as the fake machine account. And we're gonna impersonate the administrator. And this will give us a Kerberos ticket. Using the uh, S4U. Um, to proxy uh, extension. We export the uh, Kerberos ticket in our Linux enver environment variable, and then we run secrets dump on the host, and we dump the, the SAM and the LSA secret. So basically we could use those ash and compromise the host. So that's that. That was on remote host that have web dam service. But if we could do remote host, why can't we do local host and use that for privilege escalation? In this uh, next demo, we're, we're going to basically do the, the same thing, except we're going to coerce the host from the internal so that we can do local privilege escalation. And this time, we're going to do it remotely from a digital ocean, and we're going to establish to SSH. First, we're going to establish a reverse SOX proxy. And second, we're going to do port forward on the port uh, 8080. So I'm just going to run the, the demo and we'll, we'll talk to it. So on the left, we have our DigitalOcean console. First, we're going to establish the reverse SOX with the, the dash R1080. Uh, and, and if, if you notice, I also put the server, uh, SSH server on port 80. Sometimes uh, port 22 might be block outbound.
The second SSH connection we're gonna do, we're gonna do the port four lesson on localhost 8080, and we forward it to localhost 8080 on the digital ocean. <clears throat> After that, we set up our SOX proxy, make sure it's at 1080, and it is. We need, for this attack, we need to have a JPEG file. It could be any JPEG file because we're going to serve it to the host, to the Windows host. So, uh, NTLM Relay X, we forward it to LDAP S on the DC. We change our HTTP port for 8080, and then we use the dash serve image to our uh, JPEG file. Once again, we do the delegate access, so it will create a fake machine account and put it in, again, MSDS, allow to act on behalf of other identity to create the resource-based constraint delegation. So here we're going to change our image profile, and it's going to force the machine account to connect to the to the web dev UNC path. So at first we receive the hash from the low privilege account, but as soon as we serve the the wallpaper, we we will see we will receive the the machine account hash right here, Windows 10 active. So the authentication is succeeded. We created the fake machine hash. We do the resource-based constraint de delegation. So only now we only have to do the S for you part and request the Kerberos ticket. Same thing as before. So we have this uh, Kerberos ticket for administrator. We're going to put it in our environment variable. And we're going to finish it with uh, PS exec on the box to get the interactive shell. Hey, Gabriel. Yeah. I got a quick question. Any sure. specific reason you're using Kali 2019? Except the older uh, impacted version. Why older impact version better? By uh, the way? Be, yeah, because I found when doing that, it did not work well for this type of attacks. Um, uh, it might be something I, I'm not doing right. I know the newer version of Impacket, they have something called multi relay, and I think it, it breaks it for a while. I thought they fixed it, but uh, for me, it just worked best with the old version. It depends what type of attack, but for those. Um, Resource-based constraint delegation. I always prefer to use the 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 one you can find on Impacket. It's zero twenty-four. All right. So at the end, we got our uh, reverse shell, not reverse shell, an interactive shell, I should say, and we compromise the host. We are we are uh, we are system on the box. We establish a local privilege escalation. So as far as cleanup. If you want to clean up uh, the MSDS uh, allow to act, blah, 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 um, you can use the, this tool, uh, uh, rbcd.py, as the machine account. No need to be DA and action flush. And that's it. So the next, uh, the next slide, it's a similar attack, except it's called shadow credential. And it used a thing called ADCS, Active Directory Certificate Services. This is Microsoft flavor of PKI. It's used for create server, uh, certificate. Could be client certificate, server certificate, certificate for uh, smart card and other stuff. But let's say we are in a situation where the blue team, they put MSDS machine account quota to zero. So we cannot create fake machine accounts. So we cannot do resource-based constraint delegation. Although the machine account, they have another attribute called MSDS key credential, and they can put a machine in there and request a, a, a certificate. S similar technique, uh, different LDAP attribute. This time, we're going to do it uh, remotely from a C2. So we will need to find a way to start the WebDAM service. Because earlier in the previous uh, demo, 
the webinar services was not started, but when we requested the profile picture, it started the, the service in, in, in the background. So this time we have a beacon established on our C2 uh, on, for Cobalt Strike. We establish our uh, SOX5 proxy. And we do our port for an ATAT just like before we did in the SSH client. Now, if we look at the WebDAV client uh, service, it is stopped. We look at our this file to course type of file we use earlier in the SMB share, but this time it's a different type of file. It's a search uh, connector MS. And if, if we notice it, it has a, a UNC for a web dev. So I locked my screen uh, for some reason. Thank you, uh, VMware. So we upload this coursing file to the desktop. I'm going to set my NTLM relay uh, right now on ATAT. That's what was inside the coursing file. Forward it to uh, LDAP on the domain controller. Use the, the flag shadow credential, and the shadow cred credential target is the host we are trying to perform local privilege escalation. And obviously proxy chain in front. So when we browse to the desktop, we see we have the, the request as the low previewer. But the attack doesn't work. This is uh, expected because the low previewer cannot write the attribute of the machine account. But it's enough to start the WebDAV client service. So now we're going to restart our NTLM again. We know the WebDAV client service is started. And we're going to finish the job with PITSPOTAM. And we're going to request a UNC uh, WebDAV path. So PITSPOTAM, localhost on port 8080. And we uh, authenticate, we give it authentication of our low proof cred. And it does not work. Uh, when you do WebDAV uh, requests, you need to wait a two, three minutes in between the, the, the requests. It's just, it's just the way it is. So we'll just run, run it again. This time it will work. We receive the hash from the machine account. And we uh, create a certificate. We, we put the machine account itself in his MSDS key credential LDAP attribute. So it can... Uh, create this um, certificate for itself. So now we're going to run another tool by Dirjan in his uh, PK init tool set. It's called uh, get, get TGT. We're going to use the certificate, and we're going to swap it for a Kerberos ticket. Make sure I'm using the right PFX file. That's the certificate file. It helps if I'm in the right directory also. And so we get the, the TGT, but as a bonus, we get the ASREP encryption key. This key can help to retrieve the NTLM uh, password. So you can get two things out of this technique. 
export the the machine certificate to uh, our Linux uh, environment variable. Now, this is optional, but we're going to use the AS uh, rep encryption key. I believe this technique is called uh, unpack, and we will retrieve the NTLM hash. As we saw earlier, this is uh, almost as good as the password because it can be used in pass the hash attack. Now we use the Kerberos ticket for the machine account, and we're going to do the S for you to get to impersonate the the domain administrator. We similar to what we did with resource based constraint delegation. No output, but it, it did work. We put the Kerberos file in our environment variable once again. And we WMI to the box. We have our uh, interactive shell. So that was a shadow credential. To do the cleanup, uh, we can use this tool called Certify by Oliver Liak, if, I'm not, uh, if I pronounce his name correctly. Uh, awesome tool, very good to uh, exploit ADCS. Uh, can't say enough good about it. So at first, we, um, we run in the context of the machine account itself. And then we, we do the list option. It will give us this device ID that we put in the MSDS key credential as that attribute. And then we run the clear, and uh, that's the cleanup. So for the next uh, demo, this is our small humble contribution that my colleague Bradley Kinsella and I did. We found that something was lacking in, in our opinion in uh, NTLM Relayx, where if you want to dump LSAS in the option right now, you need to dump it with LDAP and this require HTTP uh, incoming requests. So the way we found to dump it is we take a SMB incoming hash and we relay it to uh, HTTP. It won't give you as much detail as the LDAP option, but at least with this option, it dumped the template that you can see, uh, for example, as a user. Sometimes the, the company, they, they don't use the default template. So this it might give you an idea and then you might end up with a certificate. So at least it, it could be your first cred. So I earlier, if we look at the LDAP attribute, the, the dump ADCS, but us, we add this uh, dash dump here in the ADCS attack module, and it dumped the user template via web. So uh, NTLM Relayx target the ADCS server with this URI, uh, dash ADCS dash dump. We're, we're going to simulate the, the request we poison with responder and we dump the user that are available. We dump the template that are available for the user. There's only one called user uh, custom demo. Now I'm going to use certify instead of NTLM Relayx to do the, the relay. It's very similar thing, specify the, the template as well. Do it again, and we dump the certificate for the low priv user. We're going to use certify once again to authenticate with the with the certificate. It give us the TGT. It give us the NTLM uh, all at once, and we use the Kerberos ticket to uh, do the, the Kerberos attack, prove that we have authentication on the domain. So the next attack, it came to my attention by the guy at Spectre Ops, Will uh, Schroeder and Lee Christensen, when they released an amazing white paper on ADCS exploitation. And this 
was combined with the work of uh, Topotam for Petit Potam. Uh, when it came out, it was really uh, disastrous for, for the blue team because you put Spotam at DC, you get the the hash because it's unauthenticated, and then you relay the hash to the ADCS on the template domain controller. You get a certificate for the domain controller, change that for a Kerberos ticket, and you can DC sync. In this demo, we will also perform this attack from a compromised ho a Windows host, meaning we cannot listen on port 445 because it's used by Microsoft. So what we're going to do, we're going to use the, this tool by Praetorian called Port Bender, where it taps on TCP 445 and it forwards it to any port that you want. In this case, we're going to redirect it to 8445. And uh, so basically, we, we can do this attack from this uh, compromise host. So we have our uh, Cobalt Strike C2 here. We establish our SOX5, reverse SOX proxy. We do a port forward from 855 on the host to our digital ocean local host 445. We proxy chain, instead of using NTLM uh, Relay X, we use CertiPy. We forward it to the ADCS server uh, using the template domain controller. Now we're going to upload the wind divert driver. That's the, the one that do the magic with the tapping on port 445. We run port bender, we redirect 445 to uh, 8445. We already did the, the port forward, so it's going to end up in our digital ocean. And now we printer bug for a change instead of using pits uh, We We uh, printer bug to course the DC2 using our low priv authentication. We can see that the forward was successful. We have the request from DCC2 forwarded to ADCS, and we got the, the DC2 uh, certificate. Still using Certify, we're going to authenticate with it. We get the TGT, we get the NTLM. The last piece of the puzzle is just to DC sync to uh, emulate uh, the main controller replication like we did earlier. Using secrets done. And this time, instead of using the Kerberos ticket, we're just using the NTLM. And we dump the, the domain. The next attack, uh, it's made by uh, two nice gentlemen from Italy that always share cool stuff, uh, splinter code and decoder. It's called uh, Remote Potato Zero. Basically, what it do is, let's say you compromise uh, a Citrix or you just compromise a host that have access to, to a Citrix box. Uh, this does some decom coercion internally and then elevate the system and steal the uh, the access or, the, or the, the token and impersonate the other people that are on the box. And then what we're going to do is using those accounts, we're going to forward it to LDAPS. So here, if we do query user, we see that we have ourselves in, in the console as low, but we also have administrator, the, the main domain administrator who's logged in via RDP, uh, RDP session in the ID number two.
So we simply NTLM relay X to the domain controller on LWS. Here we use SOCAT because uh, by default, Remote Potato Zero, it needs to do a Oxid Resolver. By the way, there's a, a PR on him packet by Mr. L98 that do this on the Linux side instead of the, the server side. So uh, we're going to run Remote Potato Zero and forward it to our Linux host. The mode zero, uh, I should have said remote potato, there is many type of attack that it can do, but this is mode zero. Our IP, our IP, and the 999 for the Oxid resolver to come back to us, and the session, session two. So it did the forward, and we had received the authentication as the domain admin. And by default, what uh, NTLM Relay X does, it creates a new user and it gives it the, the, the permission called replication get change all, which basically gives the right to do the DC sync attack to the new created user. So the last piece of the puzzle, we're going to DC sync once again as this newly created user. And bada bing, bada boom. That's done. We got all the keys of the domain. Until this, all the exploit, the abuse, I, sh I should say, that we've done, it was all on NTLM uh, relay. But uh, this year, uh, earlier this year, James Forshaw, who's an amazing re researcher in this domain, proved that it was possible to do it over Kerberos. And then uh, Dirk Jan once again uh, released a blog where he used many mineral six to poison and force the, the DNS of the client to authenticate back to you and forward that uh, on, on Kerberos. So this is similar to what we did earlier with man in mineral six, except that the, we use a KRB relay X instead of NTLM relay X, forward it to the DC. And uh, we're going to Mix that with the ADCS uh, attack. The template is the machine template. We're going to use uh, men, uh, men, men and mill six. We're going to force a refresh on the network card. We see that we have our authentication and we send the SOA that's to force uh, the, the DNS to uh, the, the client to authenticate to us. And we have created, we have done the certificate for the machine and it's dumped in base64. So we're going to dump that in a file. And once again, my screen lock, thank you, VMware. I'm not too sure why it does that. So we're going to use get TGT like we did before. Uh, specify the PFX is base64 for the machine account. It gives us the TGT. Export the TGT to the environment variable. Do the S4U uh, imper impersonation. Once again, we use the default domain account, domain administrator, I should say. And we do a WMI exec on the box. And we do a, we have complete a local privilege escalation. So this is the last demo. All those techniques that we um, demonstrate, there is a tool that was released like by uh, DEC1. And earlier, 
there was a similar tool released by Q0x0. It basically do all the shadow cred or the RBCD, but automatically. And it also use um, UAC bypass by uh, James Forsha. So all in that included in one package, bada bing, bada boom, and it related to uh, Kerberos. So at first we're gonna use the mode I'm going to wait. I, I don't remember on top of my head. We're going to use the, the mode sh shadow creds. And with the dash uh, for shadow creds, flush the MSDS key credential link. And it pops a shell as system as a result. For the second part, we're it locks again, where I think it's something with the L or typing L too fast in a RDP session. For the next part, we're gonna do the same thing, but with resource based constraint delegation mode. Make sure that the create new account, the, the computer name, it's a different one uh, than the one I did pre previously. So same thing, very simple, very fast, uh, pops a shell as system. And finally, you can do the same thing, but create a services that point to a binary uh, as a payload. And in this case, it's a COBOL strike payload. And we will receive a beacon elevated as system. So this completed all the demo I had for you today. Uh, special mention to our friend and colleague at Black Hills, uh, Justin Angel, who created a tool called uh, Eve's Art. If everything that you're trying to do, it doesn't work because everything is patched. What this tool does is that it looks for ARP request and uh, it tells you maybe there's a decommission server or something that's not there anymore. You can take over his IP and hopefully receive uh, something from the, from the server. So that's a, li a last resort uh, option that's for you. We, Justin made a webcast and there's a blog about it uh, on our Black Hills website as well. Now we're going to touch uh, briefly on mitigation. How can you mitigate all of that? Uh, first of all, disable LLMNR, NBTNS, and MDNS. Disable IPv6 if it's not in use. Set MSDS machine account quota to zero so that you cannot create a fake machine account. Uh, monitor uh, and alert on those even ID matching MSDS act to act on behalf of other identity. Uh, monitor and alert the same for MSDS key credential. Monitor and alert for this ID for uh, PKI init authentication. Enable uh, and require uh, LDAP and SMB signing. Also implement EPA for HTTP and LDAP. Ensure to enable a uh, localhost firewall. Implement uh, network uh, segmentation. This is very hard for us when there's a good segmentation to, to move laterally. Consider disabling the web DAF client service so that you cannot do all those shenanigans. Uh, implement RPC firewall rule and uh, monitor on malicious uh, RPC activity. This is to prevent uh, Petspotam, for example, although we know they always come up with new uh, RPC call. Consider disabling the print spooler uh, so you can uh, be affected by the printer bug, especially on, on the DC. It's not always available uh, for the workstation, we understand. Configure uh, privilege escalation as account is sensitive and ca cannot be delegated. Same thing uh, for a protector user group. This will reduce a lot the uh, possibility for those attacks. Uh, consider removing the ADCS HTTP endpoint so that uh, web enrollment so that it cannot be really there. And consider manual manager approval step uh, for the template on ADCS where it makes sense so that even if someone requests a certificate, it has to be approved uh, before it's generated. And lastly, audit your ADCS template and server's permission. You can use uh, SpectreOps uh, white paper on that. Uh, this is a very clear path to uh, straight to the A. We, we see it a lot in the environment. Here are some mitigation reference. I want to take a second to thank all of those users that were so generous to share their knowledge and their tool. Without them, it, this couldn't be possible. So uh, every, every single one of you. Uh, these are the reference from all the techniques of what we uh, talked to today.
And uh, basically, this is the end. Uh, thank you for listening. And uh, if, if you are a blue team or if you want to hire us, we do uh, all type of assessment from internal, external, active directory assessment, cloud, Wi-Fi, web app, physical, Wi-Fi, uh, phishing, phishing, so social engineering. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us at Black Hills. All right. All right. Caught me off guard yet again. <laughs> Gabriel. Yeah, yeah, I'm finishing a little bit earlier. Sorry about that. Yeah, fine. Sure. You can do that up in Canada. <laughs> uh, so we had a series of questions, and pretty sure they were at a period of time where you covered so many different things. So what I'm going to do is, if anyone still has questions, like this is the opportunity because sometimes when people ask a question, I don't want to interrupt you because I don't know if you're about to answer it. But then you covered so many different tools and topics and everything. I think. Yeah. So uh, what I'd like to do, first of all, great job. Great job. Very well done. Thank uh, you. Good job for your first time. How do you feel? You, uh, yeah. feel, feel... I, f I feel better. Because <laughs> it's done. <laughs> I feel <Yeah>. better. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so if we have any questions, now it's time. Now's the time to ask. Them. So some white guy said, seldom do I see many demos that work through an entire talk. And what you did was record them and then speak over them. Yeah, absolutely. Because the, the chance of something going wrong is way too high for, for that. But I made the webcast so that people can use it and turn around and uh, use it as a, a reference with the command and the cleanup and the video so that it could be useful for blue team and, and attackers. Yeah. Uh, so a question here is, hi, about SMB Relay. If we have a SMB Relay with SOX via NTLM Relax, can we use the same Relay to run other tools like SMB Map? I know we can run impacted tools, but running other tools via the Relay. Yeah, I get, I get the, the question. It's a good question. Uh, the answer is yes, you can proxy other tools. Uh, it might work. Sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, I think it depends on the... Yeah, the authentication of, of the tool work, but uh, in most of the case, it should work. It, it needs to be on the same host, on the same protocol, and uh, using the same uh, context. Uh, so today's presentation is a different flavor. I like it. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes we just you know get in, but you like like just walk right through each and everything. Uh, that happened. So can't play with the demo. God stays present. Is it possible to share the virtual machines set up so that we can practice it in our in our own environment? Well, uh, some colleague uh, suggests maybe we can do a pay what you can course, and uh, we'll we'll see. Somehow I'm not seeing the link to the slides. Can you link again? Yeah. Uh, so if you're in Discord, you can always go over to the Slides Resources channel. And if you're not in Discord, I will go ahead and grab the file and drag it into the chat. And then you'll be able to grab it directly from the chat. Uh, Paul said that would be cool if we could do a Pay What You Can class. They want you, you to wear my hat. Thank yeah. you, Paul. Uh, at, what, at what point do you think I'm going to switch to Kerbalax instead of NTLL and Relax on this test? Um, I don't know. It, it, it seems to be very... Like, when Pitspatam came out, Microsoft said, uh, we won't fix it. This is intended by default. Disable NTLM uh, in your environment, and this is almost sure it's going to break something, and it's, all, I wouldn't say impossible, but it's very hard to do. But I guess as more time pass, uh, we will pivot towards uh, Kerberos. I've got a question here. It says, I dabbled in proposing changes to our environment similar to these. The pushback I get is the dependencies that, dis that disabling the services are unknown. Any insight? Where there is a, a will, there is a way. Uh, hire <laughs> us and we'll make a good report for your cost. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, so... It, Recently, we had a thing and I was like, well, what happens if we like disable it? We'll break stuff. And I was like, well, I mean, if we disable it, we'll find out exactly what's broken Correct. Right, by disabling it. So. All right, let's see. Any other questions? Uh, he said, our team is nervous on breaking services. So. No, it, it's totally understandable. It's not easy to apply those mitigation, to, to be honest, but uh, it's highly effective. All right, I think. I think that's it.
I think that's it. Oh, are there are there risk to net to networks by poisoning WPAD? Uh, poten- potentially, yes, depending on the environment that they have. All those uh, network poisoning, there's always a little bit of risk. So I would suggest uh, practicing in your lab. And by the way, you, you can build all those labs for, for free. Microsoft, they provide the ISO. You can use an uh, old computer uh, you have laying around. And uh, I built all this lab for free except for uh, uh, Cobalt Strike C2. Does using cloud negate most of these attacks? Uh, depend how your cloud is uh, interconnected. Dark. It, it's a little bit short answer, but yeah. yeah. yeah that's fine. I just want to put it out loud. It was a really awesome talk. I know this talk didn't cover much about OPSEC, but how can we make this whole testing a bit more less verbose so the blue team will catch us? Uh, it. it Every environment is different. I would say uh, at the end, uh, in the final step, obviously don't use PS exec, maybe try to use a more uh, stealth uh, lateral movement. Does Defender for Identity pick this attack? I am not sure. When setting up your lab, is all the images on one laptop or, or set up on a desktop? Well, I have an old gamer machine that I, I don't game and I just RDP to it. And there's a bunch of VM in there. Just just have enough RAM, I would say 16 gig minimum and one or two SSD and you're good to go. So one of the things I noticed listening to your talk is that you pick up so many different techniques from so many different sources what is like how did you find like what is your normal routine to learn attacks from other people yeah i i usually you get a lot of the the new stuff that comes out on uh twitter and also i would encourage you to hang out in the the discord or, or the slack of different uh infosec company so that you you can learn about that and just like uh, have your routine of blogs and uh, just basically it's just a uh, how bad do you want to learn? And the rest will come. Is there anyone on Twitter you would say uh, follow? Uh, definitely uh, those guys I, I, I mentioned earlier, uh, Dirjan, Forsha, Arnjoy, uh, Elad Shamir. I, I did not ma- mention it, but he did discover half of that. Yeah, it, it's in the slide in the credit page. Okay. Can you share the architecture and the services that you had to configure to make this demo? Uh, this come back to, uh, we'll see if there's enough requests maybe for a pay what you can course. Okay. And you know, this originally started with, like, you were in a pods meeting, right? At work and talked about some of these things. And then someone said you should turn it into a blog and you're like, wait, no, I, I want to do a two hour webcast. So like, how did all this come about? Like, how did we get here today? Yeah, well, uh, I've been like uh, uh, following John for like over a decade, and uh, I end up having the luck to be hired by him. So thank you, John, for that. And uh, I we have team meeting. That's what he's referring as pod meeting, and we exchange our uh, test and idea and technique. And my colleague were like, "This is so cool. You you should put it in the in, in a blog." And I just hate writing. So uh, for me, seeing is believing. So I was like, okay, I'm going to make the, the demo the way I want people to make demo with all the command, all the video so that they can turn around and use it. So that's how this came to fruition. And I'm going to give you the same last question that I gave Tim last week. Like, So this is your first Black Hills webcast. You've been on the other side watching these for a long time. And now you're here. Like what, what made you want to make that transition? And I'll have a follow-up after that. Well, I, I didn't really want to make this podcast, to be honest, uh, but uh, I'm glad I did. And it's just weird to talk to you guys because like I said uh, to you before, it feels like I'm talking to the TV, like in a crazy movie. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, I, I did it like to help the company, to share my knowledge, like so many have shared to me, uh, bring awareness to the blue team and hopefully... Uh, attract business uh, for our company. All, all, all good things. Sure. <laughs> all right. Any final words, Gabriel? Uh, merci. Uh, salut, Enzo. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're, right. you're welcome. 
<laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us today on this Black Hills Information Security webcast. We had Gabriel and Tim. And Deb was here. Brian, Brian was here, but mainly it was Gabriel. Like it was Gabriel here today. Uh, we appreciate you being here. If hopefully you can hear me because people say my mic's low, but and, uh, you yell and, yeah, I'll just yell like right into it. Uh, if you like this, join us next week. We have an active countermeasures webcast. And then the week after that, we have like a four hour roundup from Wild West Hacking Fest. And then if you want to come to Wild West Hacking Fest, we're doing that in October. So it'd be great to see you there. Uh, we do this all the time. If this was your first time, we hope you come back. And if this was like your 40th or 50th time, thank you so much because we do this because of you. Uh, you bring us joy because we get a chance to help guide you in the security world. And we can't wait to meet you in person. So we'll see you all next time. Bye -bye. Hey, Brian, kill it with fire. Fire. That was what I said. <laughs>